if you are anything similar to me you definitely enjoy video games anything from animal crossing and pokemon to red dead redemption 2 and then also hogwarts legacy uh which just came out on ps5 but i also teach stem and when you do with middle school and high school students you're definitely going to come across block coding and type coding and one of the coolest things about being able to code with your students is being able to actually upload their 2d games to a device now oftentimes teachers do not have that resource to be able to purchase the devices and if they can they try to run with it as far as possible when it comes to the great opportunities that the students have to actually see their work in progress that being said i cannot wait to hang out with my overbound students and show them how to use these that's right the electric freaks retro arcade for education this thing is really cute and we're about to get into the unboxing now this device definitely comes with the retro arcade it comes with some brick packs so if you want to use it to be able to connect to some lego buildings that you've got going on that's capable and then on top of that you have the usb wire which is usb type c to type a which is really good sometimes you get those uh, micro android cables or maybe an sd card depending on how much you're uh, putting towards these devices and depending on their capabilities and you also get a user guide which is in japanese and in english but this is pretty straightforward so let's go ahead and start to open it pretty easy to just go ahead and snap that open and as soon as we slide that baby right on out here we have the device front and center and then you have the bricks uh, lego adapters if i'm not mistaken um, you can actually probably use this with the ev3s as far as legos are concerned as well um, and then of course that type c cable that i was talking about neatly packaged and wrapped with a cute little rubber band and this is going to come in handy because not only can you use the type c for multiple devices but it just shows you that they put a little bit extra care in making sure that these devices are a little bit more update when it comes to the connectors now let's go ahead and look at this cute retro arcade i mean the colorful shell is one of my favorite colors actually so i love that colorful shell and the silicone buttons are made small for small hands so we're talking about elementary as well and on top of that even for your middle school high school and college students who are getting into coding and want to start simple it actually feels pretty good in the hand now i have small hands but even when you turn it around there's this little divot at the back where your fingers can nicely be placed and so you will not be uncomfortable even with such a small device and if i'm not mistaken this definitely has a 320 by 240 screen as far as resolutions are concerned it has sound that you can uh, adjust as far as the volume is concerned as well you have your menu button your reset button and on the top you have a power button on the bottom there's that type c connector you have your a and b and directional buttons right there front and center and i also believe that you have your power indicator right over here and connector indicator right over here as well so let's actually power this bad boy on and i'm going to show you a game that i uploaded to the retro arcade just to give you an idea of what it's capable of and here is this cute little retro arcade already ready to be used um, with an uploaded space adventure game and it's very simple it's a 2d game but all you're doing is trying to shoot the other uh, little asteroid spaceships that are coming towards you so as i press a uh, we got the missiles going out and every time they go out they make a pew pew noise right and then on top of that if i get hit uh, it makes a little crashing sound and then i only start with three lives so there's my score of 11. now this thing is really cute and very usable i absolutely adore it and the coding that goes into this game is not as complicated as experts would think it is but for kids who are just learning it does get a little crazy 
Now, I hope that if you are a teacher, that obviously you are taking the time to be able to make sure that your students understand block coding and type coding and the types of code that are available to be able to use this. So there are multiple different resources that you can use, but for me, I personally use arcade.makecode.com to get them comfortable with block coding and creating their 2D platformers, uh, space adventures, or maybe they're more heavy games when it comes to EL so learning how to create and write stories and I also make sure for my older students that they are bigger game projects so what I want them to do is be able to have a team of game developers so you're gonna have your artists who can actually create and you don't necessarily have to rely on the guides or the um, the default pixelated characters and things that they have and so I make sure that you have your default um situation where you know you have your kids who are interested more so in the art aspect than creating uh you have the kids who are in ela and they kind of want to dive more into the story uh, as far as writing it and then you have the other kids who are really good at coding and learning how to do bugs and then you also have your testing group of students who are writing down uh, the notes they have for testing when it comes to this device. I also use Microbits as well, which is a really great resource as far as learning how to do basic coding and using LED lights to show that code off. And so what we did was we created this flashing heart, which is really cute. Um, and we created these Lego homes and put the flashing heart in it because of the saying, home is where the heart is. And so when you have cool stuff like that, the students will definitely learn a lot more, a lot better. And they begin to see the relative process of how things actually work in real life and can actually have a good Good, um, direction as to where they want to go when it comes to careers or just STEM in general. So I was curious, I'm sorry, I was curious to actually figure out what is in the packaging as far as the retro arcade is concerned. So clearly we see that little, uh, uh, I think this is a 560 milliamp battery that we have here um, via its connector. Now I'm wondering if I can pop this bad boy out. I want to, but I also don't want to mess it up. I'm trying to see where I can pop it out. Clearly this is where the display is connected. I'm pretty sure that's a display port connection ribbon. And um, let's see. I'm going to take this tool with that little flat uh, head and I'm going to pry this out. Doesn't take much to do so after you remove the screws. Okay, here we go. So you have the sound, um, sound right here. Of course you have your up, down, left, right for your directional buttons and your a and b menu and reset of course it is connected to the display so here's the back of that display here's the display ribbon like i said earlier i mean this isn't a bad setup very simple it isn't like it's uh <laughs> um a, a raspberry pi or anything but it gets the job done there's that uh here you go that type c connection right there at the bottom I do know that if you press B when this thing first turns on, if you press B, it actually vibrates. And if you press A, it'll make noise. So I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but I also want to see how I can get this particular item to vibrate every time my little spaceship gets um, demolished when that little game. So I like to be able to use that quote unquote retro arcade rumble that they have going on. And of course, over here, you have those silicone buttons for A and B. So that is the inside of the retro arcade. And there's the LED for the power. We're gonna go ahead and place that back in carefully and go ahead and start screwing uh, these bad boys back in so that we can continue to enjoy it. And I'm actually going to let some of my older students um, deconstruct the, the gaming model 
um, so that they actually know how it works. Sometimes when you have items that aren't working properly, they're very good learning curves for the students as far as trying to fix them. And for me, it's just a whole lot of fun. <laughs> I love video games. I love being able to take things apart. I love building things. I love creating and coding. And so with that in particular, this right here, I just feel like I'm playing with a, <laughs> a cool toy right now. So I definitely love my job, but I love being able to share my hobby with you guys for sure. So I definitely hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure that you give it a like. And if you want to see more like this, make sure that you subscribe. Share me out and shout me out and help me grow this channel. Come on over to Instagram and hang out with me at Southern Air Collector. And I'm also on TikTok at Ironheart Blurred. As usual, we're all about tech toys and teaching. And I really do appreciate you helping me indulge in my ikigai.